how much money you make on the road. People have been getting <laughs> so pissed off about this. How do you handle the public hassling you when you pull into camp? And do you think you ever go an American truck? G'day guys, we're doing a Q&A. We're gonna run through some questions you guys have asked us. Hard hitting or not so hard hitting. There's no dumb questions and there's gonna be a heap of dumb answers, so strap in. This video is definitely not sponsored by Solo. <laughs> we just enjoy drinking it. We like to be fully transparent on the channel. This is definitely not sponsored. Definitely paid $10 for a 10 pack. That's right, dollar a can here. And uh, it's a thirst crusher today because it's 40 degrees outside. Let's not put socks on centipedes. Let's jump straight in and uh, start answering some of your questions. So let's, let's do right. that. We got... <laughs> Heaps and heaps and heaps of questions. So we've seg segregated them into travel, car, caravan, personal questions, social media, and then our filming and editing. So we'll start with the travel questions. Yes, and we're going to go through our plans for this year too. Yeah. So that's going which to be is one of the one of the questions. That's the main. <laughs> that's the main thing about this video. I was sort of talking about that. So let's do it. Should we start with that then? Yeah, right. we'll start with that. But also next week too, we're going to make a video about how we make money and how you guys can make money on the road as well. So not many people do that. It's a lot of personal information, but we think that we can help a lot, a lot of people with that. And uh, if it isn't something you want to learn about uh, to do yourself, maybe it'll raise awareness a little bit about what we do, how we do it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's cool to talk about. Um, and not many people do it, like I said, because it isn't something that people like to talk about. Well, but, it's personal information. Yeah. yeah, but we're willing to share that with you guys if it is going to help you. So anyway, let's crack onto these bloody questions. All right, so travel plans for the year. We are doing the WA coast again, so we're going to go from, we're based down in the southwest of Western Australia, yep. and I'm going to hit all of our favourite spots that we did in 2021, and it is already proving to be so different to 2021, because you cannot get bookings anywhere, it's no. so busy here. Yeah, we almost missed the boat, and we were booking yeah. five months in advance, and we almost missed it, so... And we've only booked a month of our trip, so yep. we might be screwed for the other four months and have to come home. And to be honest, <laughs> everyone was harping on about this when we were on the East Coast, saying WA's gotten so busy and stuff, and because we haven't been home for three years, we didn't really realise, so yeah. it is as bad as what people were telling us. It wasn't bullshit like we hoped it was, and uh, yeah, it is yeah. pretty hard to book campsites at the moment, which yeah. isn't the best, but... Hey, people gravitate to really good locations around Australia and they're normally the busy ones because they are so nice. So someone asked what is the favourite, our favourite place that we're most looking forward to seeing this year. It's probably I'd the say, Ningaloo Coast, yeah, I'd say. I was going to say Ningaloo Station for yeah, me, yeah. which we've only managed to get like four nights booking there because it's all booked out as well. But yeah, So that's like yeah. South Lafroy, Windabandi, and normally you can drive uh, all the way up mm -hmm. to Exmouth along the National Park there. So, um, yeah. Don't know if that's going to happen. I think there's like a lot of sand being blown onto that track, so you can't even do that at the moment. So it's mm. proving to be a little bit difficult this year. But <laughs> if life gives you lemons, you got to make lemonade. It's the only thing you can do. So we're just going to roll with the punches there. Yeah. Okay. So first question is, how do you go about finding places, refilling water tanks, dump points, gas bottle swaps, and all of the basics? Um. Stick to spelling proof. <laughs> We, ba we probably just use like Wikipedia, not Wikipedia. Wikipedia! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we use Wikipedia to find camps. It's normally pretty wrong information. <laughs> we use Wikicamp app or like Campedia to find all of our campsites, dump points and water refills. So yeah. we actually did a video of that like three years ago, how to use those. Wikicamps. Yeah, It'd so be a terrible video. Don't hey, go. I did that Oh video. shit. It'll be terrible. Don't go watch it. Our old videos suck. So don't go watch that. Um, yeah, so we use those apps and then when we're going into a town for like bottle swaps or gas bottle swaps, we'll just Google where the closest yeah. camping shop is or something. Mo well, most surveys do swap and go. It's like yeah. literally 90% of surveys. So if you can't find gas, you, like it's you're doing something wrong. So yeah. don't worry about where to get gas. Normally, heaps of places have that. I'd yeah. say water, depending on what state is the hard one. Dump points... And water, I'd say. So, they're your two ones, but like Sarah said, Wikicamps and also Campedia is an awesome um, family-owned app that uh, is emerging at the moment. So, yeah. Campedia is definitely a good one to look at. Um, and then the next question also links to that. They're asking, what are our top five apps while on the road? So, Campedia, Wikicamps, he Hema? Hema. We use Hema. That's yeah. pretty good for, like, tracks and stuff. We just pay the, we paid a once off $99 yeah. for the app. We don't actually have the full navigation system. No, the app's really good though. Yeah. It has a lot of maps and stuff. Honestly, like just Instagram and 
yeah. Facebook is where we find most of our spots. Yeah, but don't look at look at Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Bit of bit of gospel because you can edit, make colours look better, and all that. Yeah. So you guys know you guys don't need us to tell you that you're a smart bunch. Mm. But yeah, it's not always what you see when you get there. Yeah. So. Um, and someone has asked tips to avoid ending up at a campsite which ends up being a party camp. You get there early and it's all well and good, and then as it gets into the night time, heaps of people rock up and have a party. Unfortunately, <laughs> again, you can't control everything. Yeah, so but we have been in that situation a few times. You just read reviews and stuff on on the campsite. Yeah. So like on Wikicamps and Campedia, they've got a review section where people who have stayed there recently can write on there. And usually if it's like a typical party spot, there'll be reviews saying yeah. that. Bush yeah. doofs. <laughs> yeah. Nah, we, to We're, be honest, it's only happened to hint like you'd be unlikely to see that. Mm. Um, it doesn't happen very often. It's probably twice happened to us anyway, twice, yeah. I reckon, in a total of three years of travel. What do you do with your van when you go off for a few days to travel without it? Oh, we did it on the East Coast. Yeah. We just normally find like a hip camp that's a bit cheaper. We'll leave it there or we'll just put it in for a service or something. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. That's a little hack. If, you're gonna, if you need to leave it to go on the islands or something, Yeah. go to your caravan repairer that's near and just say oh I want you to do the bearings on it <laughs> and say oh I can't pick it up for a few days and then they do the service and they hold it for free that sounds really bad actually but most caravan <laughs> parks actually if you say to them do you have storage they'll store your caravan for like $10 a day so some do anyway. yeah most have storage have you ever had any security issues leaving your van unattended while you go off exploring we have just dropped our new merch We've got a few different designs. They're all available on our website, so it'd be really appreciated if you go over and buy some stuff, support us, get some sick merch, and yeah, thanks heaps of the support, and uh, hope you enjoy the video. We have finally got patches, all available on our website. How sick is that? They look mint. Have you ever had any security issues leaving your van unattended while you go off exploring? We've or had has possums, there been times when you feel unsafe at camp, and how do you handle it? Again, possum incident. We left this bloody hatch open on caravans. Everyone's seen that flywire stuff that stops leaves getting in your hatch when you leave it open. And there was just like a big hammock for a possum and its ass was just sagging into the van. And um, yeah, that, that was a bit of a security issue, but we haven't had too many bad issues. We no. trust our instincts a fair bit. In um, Broome, like there was a lot of kids going around camps and stuff and like, Basically, if Being your kids. car was open or your caravan was open, they would open it and go through your stuff. Like, or if you left stuff out, they'd take it. But not necessarily people fully trying to break in. And when yeah. we leave our caravan unattended, we have a Covix alarm clock, yeah. which we just put on the front, and that's motion. So if someone touches it, yeah, plays yeah. with your stuff, it goes If someone off. plays with your hitch, <laughs> if you know what I mean, the alarm and goes, goes off. off. You're hoping no one plays with your hitch. Nah, honestly, them Covix yeah. locks, is that's all we use. Um, we don't have Y-Tie or anything like that. I, I don't even know much about the Y-Tie system. I just know some people run that, but we've never had an issue. And the Covix lock, I think, is just over 100 bucks. Hmm. Um, get it on the ProTrek website, and SKT15 will get you a discount on that, and it'll save you a bit of money on a lock if you are looking at locks. And, yeah, that's pretty much all we yeah. use. So. And basically, if you roll in somewhere and you feel unsafe, just, just leave. leave. Because yeah. if you feel unsafe, during the day at night time you won't feel great what do you do to fill in your time on those wet and wild days that doesn't <laughs> that sounds is that sexual innuendo i don't know what you mean yeah. by that but we work full time on the road so this is like a bit of a um tricky question for us because we do work on wet days but yeah, i don't know we 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 sit down on our laptop most days anyway but yeah. we just do more work on them wetter days like for me i'm adhd and um, if I didn't have, oh, there's a mosquito. Speaking Can you see it? Sorry. <laughs> if we don't, if I don't do anything, I go insane. Sarah has to deal with that. So <laughs> like, if I'm on my laptop working, like that keeps me occupied, and I'm like editing videos and stuff like this. Like what you're watching right now would have taken me ten hours to edit, well roughly, and um, that keeps me occupied. That keeps me brain going. And um, yeah. Yeah. So we just work. But if you're in a town, you can go like to a museum or. I'm sure there's lots of stuff to do. <laughs> that is the worst advice I've ever heard you give. No, we went to the Killer Whale Museum. And that oh, was that really was good. cool. Sorry. Take Sorry. Back. Yeah. Some museums are cool. <laughs> what are some, what's the most overrated and underrated places in Australia? Museums. <laughs> <laughs> museums. <laughs> most underrated museums over 
Wait. But it's no, underrated. underrated it was the Kilowile Museum. That was sick. Go to the Kilowile Museum on in New South Wales. In Eden. Eden, yeah, that was wicked. Yeah. Learn about that Kilowile. This is amazing animals. Like I could talk about it forever, but the humans and then work together to herd the bigger whales in. Yeah, it's really cool. Well, there you go. There's your underrated spot, and our most overrated spot would probably be Early Beach. Early Beach, yeah. Do you guys stick to any kind of routine? Nah, not really. Like, well, we pretty, do. Like we wake erratic. up work for like oh yeah at least four to five hours then we go out we do our stuff we come home we work a bit, bit more and then we have dinner and then we go to bed so. i really um i really appreciate like them people that have that morning routine like they wake up they do like 20 minutes of stretching they meditate they have a cold shower an ice bucket whatever like i really wish i could do all that but I, we honestly don't so yeah. it's, it's literally wake up edit both of us on our laptops go out film stuff cool stuff hopefully have a lot of fun come home, put all that footage in, cook dinner, go to bed, repeat. We do of. want to try and have some sort of more of a routine this year, just to like have that balance of work yeah. and life, because while we're on the road, we do find that we just work. Yeah. Even though it doesn't seem that way, but yeah. Yeah, you only see in probably 10% mm. of like the externals, like a lot of stuff would, like for instance, this video here, um, we, we put up a poll on Instagram and then Sarah's gone and taken everyone's questions, collated them in this, like I wish I could show you, but it's a beautiful <laughs> spreadsheet thing that I could not do. And then obviously then we film it and then we've got to edit it. So the time this video comes out, there's probably about 35, 40 hours worth of work, whether that's planning and, and, this and executing. this is an easier and video and to This do. is very easy <laughs> to do, so yeah. Um, all right, so determining quantities of clothing for each of you without uh, going overboard. <laughs> don't ask her. Ask me, right? <laughs> you need two pairs of jocks. You flip them inside out. You get four days. No, Sarah has heaps of clothes. I don't have as many, so. Yeah, it is hard because you're traveling Australia, so you're literally going to go through all seasons. Like, you will have cold weather and you will have hot weather, but you're going to have more hot weather if you're traveling and trying to chase the sun. So maybe only pack, like, one jumper, one pair of trackies. Like, we just went a bit overboard. Yeah, and for us, like, I don't care about wearing the same shirt, like, maybe two days in a row. Like, I'll have a good smell. <laughs> and, like, I hate bad BO. Like, I'd kill myself if I ever stunk like shit. So, like, if it smells bad, I'll throw it in the wash. But if it smells all right, I'll put it on again, so. You've got to, like, take into um, account how often you'll be at a caravan park or a washing yeah. machine, you know? Like... If you only have a few shirts and shorts and a few pair of undies and you're going off grid for three weeks, you know, like, yeah. how are you going to wash all your clothes? The so, math doesn't add up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and shoes, like, we honestly only wear our boots and our bergs. But we brought other shoes. Like, this year, another thing we need to add is that we're doing, like, a serious colour in our van about, like, we, we going from a house to a caravan, you already colour a lot of stuff. Like, you don't yeah. need a lot of stuff to be happy. And then once you do some travel with that amount of stuff, you realise you don't even need half of that. So, like... There's just levels of culling stuff, <laughs> and uh, we're currently in culling level number three, and we're just gonna yeah. get rid of so much shit. Yeah. Planning to hit the road next year. Is See. there a preferred way around Australia, clockwise versus end clockwise, and best time of the year to kick off and still enjoy the good weather? If you ask some grey nomads, I'm talking <laughs> like the ones that have been doing it for 20 years, they reckon a specific way you get better fuel economy, it is a thing. I know it is, I don't know anything is about it? it. Yeah, but um, we've just gone sort of up there, around like if anyone Zag. if you've been following our travels we really haven't done sort of been pretty um anti-clockwise but yeah i don't know yep. sort of what you want to do and best time of year to kick off and still enjoy the good weather well you Depends just want to be up are. north for like mid-year and down south for the summer so yeah make that work <laughs> that's as simple as it is cool map that someone put up on the caravan facebook page or something Oh yeah, like and that. it has and it the months and stuff. Shows you how you can do a lap in a year and actually get good places at good times of the year, but you're expressing like pretty quick and like some places we know you want to spend like two months mm -hmm. and they've only allocated like half a month there. So like you sort of yeah, like it, if you're trying to do it's a difficult. lap in a year, you're not gonna see everything. It's still very beneficial, like hundred percent go do your lap in your year. Like you'll have a fantastic time, but just lower your expectations because you won't see it all. Mm -hmm. That's our best advice. Products for van life. We're gearing up for our indefinite lap. Congratulations. Sick. That's <laughs> awesome. You won't know yourself. Yeah. Um, Product, products. What products? For us, our most recent purchase would probably be our coffee machine. Yeah. But that's like a an bit addiction. of a luxury. Uh, and it's an addiction. So like you justify <laughs> your addictions. You spend a lot of money on cars. Like you don't need 
a flash cruiser or a flash yeah. truck or whatever you're doing like just have what you've got make it work because at the end of the day when you're pulling up at this this awesome spot whether you got a, a ram a land cruiser a corolla behind you the spot in front of you doesn't change and that's what it's all about is getting yeah. out there and seeing that spot it's not what's behind you what you're towing with whatever that it maybe really you're just matter. like trying to make everything super lightweight like compact so like for your tupperware getting stuff that folds down it can all stack in nice and neat we can only speak on what we've used like iTech world obviously we run iTech world as much as we can um urban caravans we love this product stuff like that like we can only back what we know and what we've tested um i'm sure Kobe's there's a lock Kobe's that's, lock that's an essential you want yeah. that safety like every um, time we leave our van we lock it up so yeah that's yeah. probably an essential yeah like i check tpms um now we're just like coming out with well, all these random things it depends what they want if they want products to yeah. like that's like i'm saying that you could do it in a corolla but if you wanted all these things to make your lap more comfortable and a little bit more enjoyable mm. you know like you can get different things anyway you guys yeah. know what we're talking about you don't we, we have a page on our um, website that has all of the stuff that we recommend so if you are looking for our whole like consensus of the things that we've used and we would recommend then there is a page on our yeah. consensus i like that word do you have a weekly budget or do you just wing it People Hot have been topic. getting so <laughs> pissed off about this. Budgets. Uh, what is everyone's issue? <laughs> we put up our... this. We don't do this now. It's a different time now. We're starting to make a little bit of money now. But when we ha first set off, we had X amount of money. And every no, I put up a budget recently and people still got upset. Oh. But my story is when we first started traveling, we both had like 20 grand each. So we had 40 grand, right? We saved up, bought our setup, no loans, no kids, none of that. We thought, bugger it, if we can go for a year at $1,000 a week, that's great. But what happens if we can go for two years at $500 a week and stretch our money that little bit more? So we got real savvy. We started cooking big meals, eating them multiple nights. We don't eat breakfast. You know, we pretty much drink coffee till one o'clock in free the camp. afternoon. Yeah, free camp. Um, fuel, free activities. Fuel was cheap back then too, <laughs> three years ago, if anyone can remember. But... um. Yeah, like that's what we did, and we were living off a hundred dollars yeah. a week groceries. Um, we still do that. Like, yeah, pretty pretty affordable living, yeah. really. It's cheaper than a house still. We've got a on that. We do have a detailed budget up on our website, and it includes like all of our like what we pay for phone, insurances, groceries, yeah, everything. People on get the road, really but, upset, but like yeah. Yeah, people, I don't know what it is, but people either think it's bullshit and we've actually proven it. Like, we put up our click and collect weekly shop from Coles on there. Um, obviously, things like alcohol is going to be different person to person, you know? Like, yeah. we're not going to include our health insurance because some people have a lot of health issues, some people I don't have any. I pay $2 a week for health insurance and you pay, like, way more than me. Seven bucks. <laughs> but anyway, that's not the point. We only include things like $500... It's more like six hundred dollars once you do insurances yeah. and booze and stuff like that, but still six hundred bucks a week is still pretty cheap. Do you guys get travel fatigue where you just get a little bit over traveling? Hundred percent. Yeah. Especially when you're unhooking every day to just go explore that place. You're coming home, you're hooking up, and you're leaving the next day. Yeah. And I think that's like part of the reason why we have been home for three months is because we just we're like craving that mm. stable at home. Familiar, familiar. Yeah, what's that know, word? yeah, that, whatever that <laughs> word is. But yeah, Sarah's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were pretty tired, so yeah, it's definitely a thing. Travel fatigue, and but we are so grateful mm. in the same breath for being able to do this and oh, this yeah. being our full time job. And without you guys watching right now, like I'm looking at you, we appreciate you because without you guys, we don't get to do this. So as much as we do get fatigued. We do remind ourselves, hey, we've got a freaking good gig here. Yeah. And we absolutely love our job. We love making you guys smile, laugh, maybe teaching you something. But um, I think also for people traveling, like it's fine to feel like that. Like this person's obviously feeling a bit over traveling. So like yeah. it's fine to feel like that. And everyone feels like that. The grass know? is always greener at the and end of the day. And you're never going to see people talking about that online. Like you're always just gonna see the highlight reel. So just remember social media is literally just a highlight reel and people yeah. aren't gonna get on there and be like, oh, I'm so over traveling. Like yeah. they just want their life to look like it's perfect. Yeah, and to be honest with you, like we try to keep it as real as possible, but we also like to stay really positive about whatever situation we're in because we found positivity is the way to get through things and, choose, and sometimes it's freaking hard to be positive. That's sort of what we've done, but definitely you do get fatigued and some yeah. days you just think, bugger it tomorrow i'm not unhooking that caravan and we are staying right here like 
yeah. we do get like that heaps. So boat or no boat, trying to decide whether it is worth the startup cost of a roof topper. This is what we're going yeah. through now. We want a boat so bad, like. We've done three years of travel without a boat, so yes, it is doable, and yes, you can still see so many amazing places. Yeah, we but just want God, a boat. A boat would be so good. Just because we love fishing and mm. heaps of spots for surfing and stuff, you need a boat. Up and like north snorkeling and... spots and stuff, even out at South Lafroy. Like I remember, we had to swim all the way out to that bommy, and it was the scariest swim of my life. Like if we had a little tinny or something, we just. We're right looking. There, we're looking we? at um, this. Is, this can be our little secret. We're thinking about buying an inflatable boat. We found one online that's around 30, 40 kilos, right? Packed up. That's the incl- that's the transom and everything. And legally, because I don't have my skippers, and sometimes Sarah sleeps in, so I want to use the boat while she's sleeping. I can legally put a six horsepower on it, and a six horsepower four stroke. They weigh around that. I think around thirty kilos, twenty something kilos. So all up, we could potentially have a tiny little inflatable boat. I'm talking like two meters. Um, that'll get us out to them little spots, you know, that isn't on our roof permanently. So it's good for like that fuel um, and wind drag and stuff. That's maybe what we're going to do. We don't, we're yeah. not sure yet. We're still looking in. It's going to be last minute because we are leaving next week and we haven't done anything to plan. So that, we so. probably won't even have one. Leaving for our trip around Australia in 24 days. What are 10 tips? Five each. Can I go first? No, because you're going to steal all the good ones. <laughs> we'll do one each. And then no, no, you just do five. I'll, I'll have the handicap. One would be if you're a couple, so try and have your own hobbies. So time alone, Keelan goes and surfs. I'll like read a book or something. That's, so are you having a dig? First tip, <laughs> first tip she's having a dig. All right, no, yeah, here's four more of those digs. Go on. Um, two would be... Don't try and plan out your whole lap because things don't always go to plan and you need to be very flexible. That's and good tip, you won't see everything. I wasn't going to say that. Go on. Three. So, yeah, you're not going to be able to see everything around Australia. It's so big. There's like so much to see. So, you're not going to be able to see everything. So, plan stuff for your second lap as well. <laughs> Come on. Do you, do you mean to jump in? Yeah. All right. My first tip out of my five, I, I don't know what I'm going to say after this one, but have fun. It's all about having fun. Like, don't go traveling for any other reason apart from having fun and enjoying yourself, whether that's with your family. If you're in a couple, even bloody by yourself, get out there, have a crack, have some fun. It's all about fun. We're all going to die one day. No matter who tells you otherwise, we're all going to die. So life's not serious. You can't take it that seriously. Um, and in 30 years time, you know, you're going to look back now and you're either going to regret something or you're going to think, thank God I did that. So you might as well think, thank God I did that. Take the risk. You don't need any money. <laughs> Literally get a job anywhere these days. Yeah. People are screaming for work. Don't worry about what we do. If you want to do what we do, definitely have a crack at that. That's probably our second tip, or my second tip. If you want to try this social media, YouTubing thing, have a crack because even if you fail... At least you had a go. You had a go and, you know, people don't fail, they just quit. So if you stick at it long enough, you'll do well at this and I can tell you that because that's what we've done the last three years. It's just been a slow grind and we're not special and anyone can do what we do. You just need a camera. It's, it's not quick money, but if you yeah. want to do it, you can freaking do it. Yeah. Yeah. But my, <laughs> Is my, that your one tip? <laughs> but within that, people don't... I want people to remember this. People people don't fail, they quit. So I want everyone to remember that. And it's all about having fun. They're my five tips. They're all in one. Oh, all one. Yeah, that's it. I can't think of anything else apart from having yeah, fun. Really. We're just going to leave it at that. It was yeah. going to be 10 tips. We Sorry, gave three. We, we, got, we gave you three. No, it was about mm. four, I reckon. Three months to do the Queensland Islands. What month would you do... We like the heat. June. Yeah. We don't know, though, for sure, because we're from WA. We just did it when we yeah. did it, because well, that's we when we could May. have done it. I think, um, like, April, May, June is the best time to do that area. And something that we really loved doing was all four, like, very, like, straight after each other, because you just compare them all, you know, yeah. exactly all these spots, and you actually get used to jumping on ferries, getting off the ferry and stuff. You're in a it's real... so big, fun. You're in a flow, so you're yeah. like... Bugger it, let's go Morton Island, you get on Morton, do a week there, bang, get off, do Fraser, do 10 days there, bang, Stratty, something like that. It's well, it so would be Stratty, Morton, and then up to Fraser. Yep. Fraser's a bit further away. But anyway. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty cool, eh? Doing them islands yeah, in a month. Yeah, that was so good. That was one of our highlights, I reckon, of our lap. When travelling, is there anything you miss most about home apart from family? Turning off maps, not needing maps to go yeah. down to the shops. Familiar. Fam- Oh my yeah. god, why can't I say that word today? Familiarity. Familiarity. 
For me, man, man. But yeah, I, we all know what yeah. Sarah's trying to say. Mine would be um, just like having your own space and stuff. Like you can go out Another and dig. Another dig. No, no, not at you. I mean, oh. you can go outside, you can hang out your washing <laughs> and there's not someone from the campsite next door like peeking over at you, hanging out your knickers, you know? Like yeah. you just like have your backyard. Yeah, if you've got space. shitty knickers, no one needs no to one see No one wants them. to see your skid marks. <laughs> yeah, so you don't want to, you, you, know, you want your space. I get that. I thought you were having a dig at me. <laughs> I, I, I rate um I rate a bit of space as well, eh? Like caravan parks are sick and like you get social and you wouldn't be drinking a pub squash, you'd be having a beer and you know oh, learning, talking to the guy next door, whatever, you know. That that sort of socialism is, is good. Um I like that. But yeah, definitely having a bit of quiet time to yourself where you can walk around in your undies, you know, just freedom. Service your ca- car in peace. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because when I service the car, <laughs> that's the worst, eh? You just get people, you know, kicking your tyre and say, oh, Blake, what are you doing, mate? Or the best one is, oh, you can do mine after you finish that one. <laughs> oh, bless them. Any places other than Ningaloo area that you need to book well in advance to see? Basically, just the whole of WA. WA. We didn't realise, but yeah. when we got home, rude shock. Yeah. Uh, Favourite state and why? Is it still WA after this whole ordeal? It used to be Western Australia. However, WA is starting to lose some of its charm, <laughs> only because of how busy it's become. But that's yeah. fine. Like I said, you can't bag a place because it's busy, because yeah, exactly. it is nice. But I think it's between South Australia and Western Australia. Yeah. I do love Queensland as well. But that was mainly for the islands. But they all, every state has their good things. Like yeah. New South Wales, South Coast, beautiful. Like no yeah. one there, I was surfing by myself. Beautiful beaches. NT for its like remoteness. No one around, it's just unreal. Yeah. So untouched. Definitely NT was a part of me. Yeah. Like just no shoes. <laughs> yeah. South Australia's mint. Yeah. You know, that Air Peninsula, we love that. Victoria's like got a lot of beautiful rainforests. Yeah. Victoria's nice. That's where yeah, our good mates live and, and Tassie, that's sort yeah. of our second home. Vic. Yeah, it's hard. It's a hard one. But I still think home, WA, is still our favourite um, and that coastline is just amazing. Have you guys met any nurses that are travel nurses? My wife and I are both nurses and we're looking at being travel nurses. Sick. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. We've met... I think we've only met a few, but they were doing, like, so they'd go to a town, they'd do a month stint there, and then they would travel for a bit, and then they'd go somewhere else, do a few months stint, and then travel again. So they were sort of, like, finding places where they would base themselves. They'd go there, work as nurses, and then travel again. But that's not... um that's not just for nurses, like every every Teachers, occupation. Yeah. So everyone, even like yeah. I could pick up a job labour and cleaning, you know, like there's just jobs for everyone. Yeah. Um, big or small, there's jobs for literally Basically, everyone. Basically whatever you're doing right now, you could probably do while travelling. Especially if you work from home at the moment, like yeah. a little sneaky hack is actually getting Starlink, hooking up your van with your Starlink and you can get reception and work like you're at home. Um, for a company and that, like they wouldn't even know you know <laughs> if you pick up my drift <laughs> but um yeah i'm not telling you to do that Wasn't if you lose your job don't don't come screaming to me but yeah you could definitely achieve that these days are the condition of the tracks and roads worse than you're expecting in arnhem land uh no nah, not after you do like cape gib you know some crappy tracks like that's just what you expect it was very corrugated yeah especially the last 60 yeah. k's into norman boy like that was mental but yeah um, with like in the vans and cars you see up there you sort of only see the same brand vans and the same brand cars like you don't see a variety where if you go to caravan parks around a lot of people you see every caravan from the most non-off-road van to the most extreme yeah. off-road van but up in Arnhem you only ever see off-road vans like yeah. it's weird um, and they're all the same brands it's, just, it's a bizarre thing have you guys done the east coast yes we have and then the next question below that was what were your best camp spots between Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast it was like more caravan parks yeah. in that area great caravan parks but we're not caravan park people like a lot of people know that don't even best need to say that best spots would be Stratty and Morton yeah <laughs> so just hit the islands it's, yeah. it's mental like it's, so it's out good. of this world like you'll love it best KFC in Australia 3, Karatha. 2, 1 Karatha oh. <laughs> Karachi Karachi sick KFC oh. And that's in Western Australia. Like, and it's the only KFC, so it's the last KFC before you get all the way up to Broome. We know where every single one is on the um, 
Wait, no, because people from Port Hedland would drive to Caratha to get the it KFC. It is Broome then. So it is Broome. Broome. So we know where every KFC on the coast is. Um, and let me tell you, with Caratha, the reason we think it's so good, one, their gravy is off its head. Like, whatever they're putting <laughs> in there. it's always so fresh. Yeah, they make it on the go, so they're not, like, stacking up the Bay Marie <laughs> and the chicken's going stale. So their chicken was overhanging the buns. And, like, when you get your burger and it's wrapped up and it's, like, a foot-long sub because your chicken schnitty is, like, hanging off the sides. And obviously... And anyone who's been to Caratha in WA will back this up. Yeah, like, it's, it's freaking good. pretty common in Western Australia for people who've been there to yeah. say it's the best. And if it isn't common, it is now, so... All right, so our next section is all about the car. So our first question is, how do you find the best place to get your car and caravan serviced? I do all the car servicing on the road. And then for the caravan, we just find whatever urban dealer is in the state. Yeah. And we go there. So we sort of just time it. It doesn't really matter if you do 11,000 Ks. Well, for me, I don't care if it's 11,000, 12,000, but... And if we have like a major car service coming up, we'll always like try and do it in a big city where yeah. there's a Toyota or something. If you're in Bunno, like, well, so if you're in the southwest of WA, Southwest Mechanical and Off-Road in Bunbury, that's where we swear by. They just did a massive overhaul on Leroy. Um, I did everything from trans flush, um, all, all the diff oils, um, new brake upgrade from Bendix, like braided lines, the shooting match. And I trust them boys. Um, they're, they're legends in there um, and Yana. So definitely go in and see, see them and, and tell them we sent you. I haven't <laughs> arranged any sort of, <laughs> I haven't arranged any sort of deal with them. But if you tell them we sent you, they'll 100% look after you. And they might do a sneaky little discount. I'm not too sure. I'll have to ring Reese. No, you can't just <laughs> say that. <laughs> wow. If you're watching Reese, you get you're gonna give everyone a discount, alright, mate? Um, someone said <laughs> these questions were sent in before we released our new car, so they said we're very excited to see the new combi when it's a big reveal. It's caught it's sort of a combi, <laughs> eh? Nah, it's so yeah, it's we not just a combi. bought a little FJ forty. Yeah, forty series, seventy five model, short wheelbase, and it's clapped, so we're gonna do a resto on that, so we're pretty keen to start that. You, all right, I'm reading this one, alright? <laughs> How do you find Leroy in comparison to Percy, our old Prado? And do you think you'll ever go an American truck in time? I don't think never say never on the American truck thing. Like I've never bagged them. I've ridden in a fair few of them and they pull hard. They pull hard like a Hereford bull and they definitely make towing look very, very easy. They do very good fuel economy. The only downfall to American truck is simply their off-road capabilities mm -hmm. and the ability that I could take it down a track that's not as that American truck shouldn't be there. It's not wide enough. Um, and I'd scratch the crap out of it. I'd break stuff. Um, you see a lot of oh, people having a crap time online with their American trucks and waiting like weeks and weeks and weeks for parts. Um, Whereas I'd, like the Toyota parts are like fairly... Yeah. New, like, like they're common. They're always around, yeah. Yeah, like we could get a starter motor for Percy, the Prado, up in bloody Cardinara when there was no other parts on the shelf. And the only reason... We could get the starter motors because that starter motor goes in a Toyota High Ace as well. So all their parts are pretty interchangeable and um, moldable. But yeah, like I said, we love the Cruiser. The 200 Series is still our favourite dream car. Um, it is a, a weapon towing, especially with the tunes and stuff we put through it. Definitely producing a lot of power. And uh, I love the noises it makes. It still puts a massive smile on my face. <laughs> tows this van incredibly well like you guys see what we do down the beach and stuff um it's just sick like i never worry about the power wise in this car but yeah if if the trucks were wider around australia i would 100 percent look at an american truck um but yeah it's just money there's another thing that they're, they're very expensive and the 200 series broke our budget everyone knew that we were absolutely broke after we <laughs> bought that car and uh and we modded it obviously but yeah it's it's just a money thing so yeah. How are you enjoying your Tanama 4x4 draw systems and upright fridge? Bloody good. Baz and the boys made a sick system. So if you ever seen their draw systems, you'll know that they're not on conventional runners. They're actually built a fair bit different. And I actually encourage you to do some research on Tanama and what makes them super strong and super light because they're doing some stuff that's totally... Uh, I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to tell you their secret. You'll have to hit Baz, <laughs> Baz and the boys up. I don't want to spoil it here. But uh, do some research on Tanami if you're looking at draw systems. Far out. They're making some good shit. My, yeah. my dad just got some in his car as well. Um, yeah. And the fridge has been great, the upright fridge. Yeah, we got we a Bushman. We prefer the upright over the chest now. Yeah. 
Bushman, 85, paid full price for it, and we love it. It's, yeah. it's awesome. What is your dream 4x4 besides Leroy, and what camera do you have? Um, well, the camera is a Sony A7 IV, Four. Yeah, and it is amazing. And we're running a Sony mic, so the audio hopefully is not too bad. Yeah. Um, dream car apart from Leroy, it'd probably be the 40 series. Like, it's super sick to have a brand new Land Cruiser. Well, brand new for us, 200 series is pretty sick, but um, having the old 40 as well, like, geez, that's, that's a good combo, eh? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, 40 series. Once we do it up, you guys wait. It's going to be sick. Like, we're going to be doing trips in that thing. It's going to be comfortable, well, sort of comfortable. <laughs> and um, we're going to have some good times in that car. So, yeah, probably the 40 series. Any new upgrades coming for Leroy? Definitely. So, not this week. Um, this week's this video, obviously. Next week's going to be the How We Make Money video. And then the following week after that, we're doing a revamp on Leroy. Give him a little bit of love. A bit of TLC, <laughs> spruce him up a bit. We're also going to show you how some of the products have fared. Like, show you guys, hey, look at this rear bar. This is what's happened to it, blah, blah, blah. Um, do, it's been on there for over a year now. Yeah, so. a year and a half, of, a year and a bit of hard travel. So, full-time hard travel, doing some hard tracks. And we're just going to touch some things up, make it better, show you guys what we're doing. And we've got some sick new products that we're going to be testing. So I cannot wait to do that. Curious to know, post engine tune, has the 200 thrown any engine codes or had any mishaps? Nah, definitely not. Like we haven't had one issue since we left Ultimate Diesel. So yeah, really good company. Um, Rob and the boys there, no matter if you'd go into any of their dealerships around Australia, um, we've spoken to a fair few of them. Uh, the lads in there and they're all legends. They all know their shit, which is the best part about it. Mm -hmm. And no, we've never had any fault codes, any issues with our tune. It's been but We also sweet. went for a very safe and reliable tune as well. Yeah, so yeah. it's making just over 700 Newton meters at the wheels on 34s. So that's still pretty safe for a twin turbo V8 cruiser. It's all about torque, but you know. Do you think a long range fuel tank is necessary to travel Australia or will a few Jerry's be okay? 100% not necessary but would be nice it's one of those things that i wish i had just for that little bit extra range we get 600 k's to a tank so sometimes we have to be strategic about where we fuel up but so not necessary but would be nice if you can do it in your weight calcs yeah moving on from fuel uh what is our fuel consumption when we're towing the van per 100 k's 22 liters per 100 about average the worst we've ever seen is about 30 and that was into like a 30 40 knot headwind it was ridiculous that was coming down the stewart highway towards Alice Springs. Um, yeah, but the best we've had is probably about 17 and that's on the freeway when everyone's going <laughs> the same direction and you're like in the tunnel and it's just a big t wind tunnel, pulls you along, so yeah. What is one thing you would change about your setup? I love how you're just answering all the car ones. I love the car questions, eh? It's like my major passion. I know, I don't have anything to freaking, say here. <laughs> I freaking love it. I honestly love it, eh? What is one thing you'd change about your setup? If we could- I guess it could be a car or caravan that they're asking. Yeah, what would you change? Um, we'd love a boat. So if we were to change our whole setup, trying to change the setup so that a boat was viable. In it yeah. somehow. And that's might, that might happen still because we just yeah. removed the rear seats in Leroy and we just dropped 76 kilos. Yeah. So I'm going to reweigh the setup tomorrow and we'll go from there and just see if it's actually a viable thing. Yeah. Um, will you upgrade the 200 anytime soon? Upgrade yeah. as in new car? No, probably Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> we just can't justify the price these days. Like, we just, the money's the limiting factor. And we, we put a lot of time, effort, money love. into our 200 series and yeah. we freaking love it. Like, it is our, honestly, our dream car. Yeah, so. it makes the right sounds, it does the right things. Yeah, we love it. Yeah. So, probably not. Um, speaking of, is there, so they want to know five things that we miss from the Prado setup. It was a lot better on fuel. Fuel. Yeah. So there's our first thing. Do you keep going? Because I can't think of any. Um, it was a little bit skinnier, so it did fit down tracks a little bit easier, and yes. it was cheaper. So when we heard the scratching sounds, we didn't actually oh. we cared, but we weren't so. Sarah's so smart. It's cheaper on parts too. So like if we do it, <laughs> to do the injectors on a one kd three liter turbo diesel Toyota engine, it's like two and a bit grand. <laughs> to do them on Leroy, it's going to be about nine grand to do all yeah. eight injectors. So cheaper to service, cheaper to, to fix. We have um, a wrap on that car because we are worried about scratches and so stuff. Extra Whereas money. the Prado, we were just like, oh, it'll be right. Because it's cheaper. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, it's different beast. But do I still miss Persian? If I had a 
If I had had another 50 grand in my bank account, I would have kept him, yeah. but we needed the money, so. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the topics about caravan. Let's bang them out. Would you consider adding an outdoor kitchen to Keith Urban? We've got one, we've got a barbecue. Yeah, we've got the Weber. When will you weigh your whole setup? We would love to see that. Um, when you give me 300 bucks. <laughs> we, like, again, it costs money and yeah, if I know what the car weighs, I know what the van weighs because we got a brand new van. We got a, a car that we've weighed. So the per uh, Percy, why well, we got Percy in our head? <laughs> Bloody Leroy weighs three and a half ton, fully loaded, full of fuel, full yeah. of beer in the back. Me and Sarah in it. It now we've now dropped seventy six kilos off that. So we're going to be about three four two, three four three, plus the van weights. We know that we're underweight. So. We've watched the info you have put up about your twelve volt system a few times now, and it was Sick. really informative. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Just wanted to know what size wiring you used to set it all up with. It's different, like if you're talking about the main current carrying cable, so like for your charges and stuff, I recommend as big as you can. So I just filmed a 12 volt install on the old man's cruiser and um, I use 16 mil cable, which is I think four BNS. Don't quote me, because there's different ways you size cables. You've got like normal 240 volt electrical ways. Then you've got auto sparky flex cable sizing. There's all different sizing, but anyway, 16 millimeter diameter is what I run for the car. And I would say that is bare minimum for a caravan if you're running the main, um, for the Anderson connection from your alternator to your DC to DC in your van. That run there, minimum 16, if not 32. So just, yeah, that's my, I could talk all day on this. <laughs> I love 12 volt, but that, that's what I'd say. Cassette versus compost. So, <laughs> what the shit talk yeah. is doing. <laughs> Uh, personally, we prefer the compost. We actually never used our cassette properly, but um, yeah, the compost, the main compartment, the composting section, we only change that every five to six weeks. And then the front compartment for number ones, that gets changed every like two to three days. So yeah, and you don't need a dump point for it. So the- There's no chemicals. Yeah, so the um, urine section is just urine. So technically it could be, tip behind a tree not that you're going to do that on a campsite if you if you get offended by people weighing on trees <laughs> that's not what we're doing but if you wanted to you could definitely tip it on trees yeah. so but you can just tip it down a normal toilet so if you're at a campsite that has toilets you can literally just pour it down whereas if you have a cassette you can't go and empty your cassette chemicals, chemicals into a long drop or something like that so just destroys it yeah there's yeah. pros and cons do you miss the lighter more nimble setup of the armor light hell yeah fire out this thing this thing's big but and it's stressful because it's it's bigger, it's heavier, it's it's more expensive, um, all things. But it's also more comfortable. Where the armor light goes anywhere, it's cheaper, um, it's slightly less comfortable. So it's just a trade off about comfortability, mm. really. And we're full timers. Um, this is our house, so we thought bugger it, we'll actually get a little mini apartment where the armor light was still like your sort of half camping because yeah. there was a lot of outside cooking. Yeah. So. Pros and cons, I do miss it in some tracks. I think bloody hell, I would have been down the beach by now if I had the armor light, you know, but yeah, it's all part of the journey and learning and, and, and yeah, I think that horses for courses, people's opinions are different and at the moment, this is what we like. It could change in the future. We are in the middle of an SKT armor light. What would you change? I would put a mini, sick mod, mini picnic <laughs> table near the barbecue slide on oh, the yeah, front true. because I struggle to put like, say I got like tongs, I've got me snags and me steak. I can't put that down on top of the barbecue because that's where it slides out. So you need like a little table next to next to your barbie so you can well, put that stuff down the... and then start cooking, you Remember know? Remember it was the pull out kitchen on the side of the caravan. So it had a tiny little table, but it was a sink. Oh yeah, So that's if you right. could get rid of the drain of the sink and just have the sink so then that middle bit is true. just bench space, true. do that. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, love your channel and content. We are getting an urban 18.9 caravan this year and going on our travels. What is one thing you would choose to have if you were to upgrade anything? Firstly, thank you and congratulations. Well done. That's awesome. <laughs> um, the upgrades that we choose out of, what would be like the most necessary? I'd say more solar. Solar yeah. is king and it just makes your trip way so better. 12 volt system. Solar. I'd say whatever batteries, because if it's an extreme, it'd already come with 400 amp hours of lithium battery standard and it'd have 800 watts. So that's a fair old size, but fill that roof up. Solar panels are, are, are really inexpensive in terms with 
uh, what a battery costs. So fill the yeah. solar up, fill your roof up, and you'll never have to worry about running out of power. That's my main thing. It's just solar. Super cool. I love solar. Right? <laughs> we are doing our love in 2025. Would you recommend an Oztrack? For people who haven't been watching our channel, we yeah. that was our first ever camper that we had. And we don't want to blow out anyone's candle to make anyone else's look brighter, but we didn't have the best run with Oztrack. And, and if you have to ask me, would I recommend that product to my grand grandma? Or I would say no, purely because of their warranty. And we got put through the ringer their with their warranty. customer service. Sorry, customer service. Uh, yeah. The way that they dealt with customers after you had your caravan was just not very nice. So, In our opinion, yeah. it wasn't good. And, and like we said, we wouldn't recommend that product to our friends and family so no we're not going to recommend it to anyone because that's what we do on the channel we and that's all from personal experiences like i'm sure that there's people out there that, that have love good experiences so yeah it that's just our personal yeah. experience with them um we wouldn't recommend it to our mum and dad so but like yeah, yeah like sarah said we're sure there's good but ones out there we just got a lemon has asked us why are we getting a new van in such a short time so i'll crack through this real quick so <laughs> <laughs> our full deal with Urban, we, we, we disclose this in our walk around. So we're not under contract with Urban. We pay for our vans. The only We're not that special. If you want the same deal as us, we get a van every 12 months. You can go and put five build slots in at the next show. You just have to pay five deposits and you'll get a van every single year. We're not, we are not special. The only thing that we do that, to Urban that no one else is doing is R&D testing. So as new products are available, aka the new TerraGuide suspension, the new Victron 12 volt system, the new chassis coating, I could go on and on. We are the, the link in between customers getting these products and us getting our hands on it first and doing some really good testing on it. That's our job, that's what we do with Urban. So we are not that special. A lot of, um we do a lot of content creation for them so that they've got stuff for their marketing. Yeah, you know? so we're taking photos of the van on the beach, us rooster tailing sand everywhere. Like it's fun, like that's how, we love to do that. So yeah, that's why we get vans every 12 months, but I also wanted to address that point that we are not special and if you wanted to do the exact same thing we are doing, you can do that. For the new van, did you get a discount or free? So again, we are it's not, not special, it's not free. <laughs> if this was free, like this van is worth a lot of money, more money, yeah, it's just insane to think about and it's definitely not free. So yeah, that's just insane that people still think that and we know like we've got friends in the industries with ambassadorships with other brands and we don't know of anyone getting free caravans. That's it's just literally a, not a thing. I think it started out on Facebook. Some Someone said, oh, bloody, these mob be getting a free van or something. And then everyone just seems to think that we get free vans now, which is so far from the truth. It's not funny. We don't sign contracts with Urban, so we can just up and leave. So yeah, like there's nothing tying us to this van. Now I could sell it tomorrow and go get a totally different brand caravan. There's nothing tying us to this brand at all. Apart from we enjoy their products, we choose to run them and we like doing R&D testing because we're a part of something very, very cool. And not many companies actually do the testing Urban does. So to be a part of that is just wicked. So I suggest you go watch our walk around video. We go through all this in a lot more detail. What's one thing you thought you'd need in the van but have left behind? Six surfboards. <laughs> Probably all the shoes we brought. Yeah, we brought too many shoes. Now we're getting into the personal questions. Oh my God, this is long. I'd love to know how you deal with living in such a close proximity to each other 100% of the time. How do you escape for your own space? Three Surfing. C's. <laughs> Coffee, no. <laughs> Communication, something else. I don't know. No, we just like each other. We just like each other's <laughs> company. Um, yeah, well, obviously we're in love, so that makes it a lot easier too. Yeah. And um, yeah, like, what we do is fun, like life's short and we just try to have as much fun with each other as we can, so it's easy. And of course easy. we bicker and stuff, but we just yeah. try and like communicate in those times and yeah. say what is actually upsetting one another yeah. and then like mo move on. Move yeah. on, yeah. It's not a big deal and yeah. people, the couples that say they don't bicker, they're just, they're, you, yeah, they're lying to you because they definitely do. It's just how you go about it and that communication, I think. And we, we let, it took us a while to learn that, to be honest with you. How long are you going to continue your travels around Australia before you set down some routes somewhere? Um, not too sure. That's yeah. a very vague question. We love what we do at the moment, so we're just gonna keep doing that. Can you say, this is living Troy in one video this year? What about now? Can I say <laughs> it now, Troy? I need a beer or something. I'll pretend to crack this up. That's living Troy! Yeah, brother! <laughs> And he also wants to know, Troy would like to know, are you planning on doing a slow lap of Tasmania? We are, but Tasmania got some crazy laws where if we <laughs> pick up our camera, right? Depend, and because we're making money off YouTube videos, if we pick up a camera, they we need to buy a permit to film, which is like 
a two lot of money. Two and a half thousand dollars. Yeah, two and a half thousand dollars. Five hundred dollars for each other permit. So we can't afford to come there at the moment, especially <laughs> if we're going to film it. Because if we go there, we want to film it, and if we can't film it, then yeah. So that's pretty much where we're at. Can you convince your government to a banish? Banish. I don't even know that's a word. <laughs> a, whatever the word is, get rid of them laws because that'd be awesome. Okay, have you ever recommended a product that you later changed your mind about? Only ever, ever say on this channel that we recommend it if it's something we would go to our mum and dad, our nan, our pop and say, you yeah. can buy this. Yeah. When are you coming to New Zealand again? We want to see you guys do the North Island. We want to do the North Island too. We'd love We're to gonna come back. We're going to do it. We're going to do it, but I don't when know when. It'll happen. <laughs> we don't know. Let's We'd go like rapid fire. What is one thing that really grinds your gears about each other? And I actually replied to this comment when I saw it because I was like, why is that a helpful question? And he came back and he explained himself and he said, I'm curious to know as you guys always seem so happy in your videos and you're the least fake people that I watch on YouTube, which is why I want to know. Short answer, <laughs> we are happy in real life and people that meet us, that's our biggest compliment. Like people saying you guys are the exact same people online as you are in real life. Yeah. And that is our biggest compliment because like we have such an amazing audience, you guys, and we're able to be ourselves. Because you guys are so nice to us and yeah, encouraging. So. Yeah, so that's pretty much the, the guts of it. Yeah, what grinds your ears about each other. Sarah does this thing where she like, <laughs> she gets some rubbish, like this can, right? And it'll be empty, there's nothing in it. Anyway, she'll put it in the bin, the bin's full, so she'll tie it up. Instead of walking to the bin that's 20 metres away at the caravan park, She'll just leave it at the door for some magic yeah. bin man to come take Everyone it out. Everyone does that. Every lady I know does that. Let you us know in the comments. All. Does that happen to you? Do they <laughs> do do Sarahs of the world put their bin bags out or do they not? Let me know. Am I the only one out there? Well, what grinds my gears about you is nothing. Killing snores. <laughs> That's what grinds my gears. <laughs> Snore? You do. Maybe a little bit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this next one is for you. Oh shit. Hi Keelan, I'm a Nana and going on your recommendation, I'll be using iTech World Solar in my bus. Would you recommend these to your Nana? Yeah. My Nana, actually, does my Nana have one? No. <laughs> my Da might have one. My granddad is my Da. Um, yeah, 100%. Like, look, we don't promote anything on the channel unless we would literally have our Nana and Da, our granddad, um, whatever, you know, run it. So, yeah, I do recommend it to you, and you'll have and a sick time. Gillen's dad's just put all iTech World in his car. His brother's got it. My dad's got it. Like It's a family yeah. affair. We all love it, and we all get around it. So, 100% yes. And if you do want iTech World stuff, don't, don't spend too much money. Don't pay full price. Use our discount code SKT. That'll get you 5% off all, time, all times of the year. You just got to enter that code in at the checkout. So, um, yeah, it's really easy to do, Nana. And... Um, yeah, definitely do that, Nan, because you'll save a couple bucks, so. Uh, what made you guys live full-time in a caravan? <laughs> um, we were just, like, sick of the nine-to-five. We were very so unhappy generic. in our... No, but it is. Like, we were so unhappy generic. in our jobs. We were going to work sad. We were having Sunday blues. We were like, nah, stuff this. We're taking a year off. Just a bad time. And here we are, still doing it, three yeah. years down the track. And it's easy to do. It sounds difficult. It seems daunting. Get out there and do it. I'll just keep yeah. saying that. It's scary, but it's so worth it. Yeah. Keelan, why are you so bad at catching barrel? <laughs> I've got a curse. Don't know who gave it to me. I think I walked under a ladder or something like that. And yeah, I just can't catch barrel now. But I've caught three. So I've caught one at... My first one was at Kale's Crossing. Everyone's seen that. Well, I hope you've seen that. That was an absolute tremendous moment for me in my <laughs> life. Um, and then we caught a couple up in Arnhem with um, the fellas out there, Damien and uh, Nathan at Boima. So... Yeah. Any chance you guys will do a USA tour? I'd love to go to the USA and do some yeah. national parks. They got That'd be some amazing. Sick animals over there. And the national parks look unreal. It just looks like another planet. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. definitely. If money wasn't an issue, what caravan would you buy? Hundred percent urban. <laughs> this one. <laughs> the thing is, right? The thing is, now seeing what we've seen, like in person, we've watched these things get built. We would not go anything else. And we haven't yeah. seen any uh, broken urbans on the road so far. Like we've seen them up in Arnhem, we've seen them Cape York, we've seen them on the Gibb, we've seen urbans freaking everywhere on all these tough tracks, we've never seen one break, we've never had ours break, and seeing them get built, we wouldn't go anything else. Do you ever get tired of people asking how much money you make on the road? This is a genuine question. Yes, we yes. hate it, because it's none your business, yeah. but next week we're going to be telling you how you can make money too. Like, 
we but only the reason why we're sharing the video next week and why is purely to help others and we're only going to share stuff in that video which is literally going to help people who are curious about making their own youtube channel when someone comes up to us and says how much money are you earning a year or how did you pay for your car how does that help you like that is none of anyone's business yeah but it's personal it's financial details you don't yeah. ask questions but like, like sarah <laughs> said we share a lot more than others and the only reason we share a lot more than others is only because it can help you guys it's all about helping you guys making you smile making you laugh but also helping you so next week we're going to show you how you can make money for yourself if you did want to go down the same track as us we're going to be showing you how much we make on YouTube because that's something that you can relate to. Because if you start YouTube and you start making views and stuff, that amount of money is relatable to you. It shows you realistically how much money you can make in our niche. And that is something to actually look at that's set in stone. It's a fact. And what we make and what we've saved and our budgets and stuff all change from person to person. So that is irrelevant. It's not going to help anyone. All right. Now we're into the social media section. We would like to know who is your go-to travelers you would like you like to follow on social media. Um, on Instagram, I love Plenty of Dust. They're, They're sick. yeah, really funny content, down to earth. Like they just say it how it is. I like um, on YouTube. I like the. Um, I, I watch a lot of Whistling Diesel, um, Cletus McFarlane now. Since we named Leroy Leroy, I didn't know who Cletus was, and everyone was like, "Oh, you can't call him Leroy because there's another Leroy on the internet." Um, Anyway, Cletus is a good bloke. Sailing with a bag one, we've always loved them. Yeah, just 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 stuff, you know, not necess necessarily our niche, but stuff that we're just interested in and, and charismatic people, you know. Yeah. Do you watch other YouTube channels for inspiration or do you just focus on your journey? Well I love um I love Jace and Simon, all for adventure. They rock. Um, they do some Crazy That's like shit. probably the only four-wheel drive channel that I watch. Like, yeah. I love them. They're I love so good. Ronnie Dahl's good too. He... <laughs> Oi, four eyes! He's, he's always been there. I think he's been yeah. doing it for like ten something Five years. Five four, but do not watch that if you're hungry. <laughs> don't watch. Yeah, don't watch Harry if you're hungry and if you're easily offended. <laughs> um, um, but for inspiration, not necessarily, because we kind of try and do our own thing. Like, yeah, we just. Yeah. yeah, stay in our own lane, do yeah. our own thing. And our videos are so different. And we're everyone. weird as shit. We're so weird. <laughs> Have you guys got any trips in planning that will be with other travellers like you did for the Cape trip? Nah, not really. It's something we sort of just spontaneously mm. do. We don't sort of tee things up with people just because, like we said, like you plan things and normally goes for us south as soon as we plan something. Yeah. So we just see where it plays out and yeah. um, if they're on the, the same area as we are, then we do something, you know. So that's yeah. sort of the way we roll. Why clog up the YouTube channel with the shorts? I notice a lot are doing it, but they are not nearly as viewed as actual content. Just curious as to why you post it when they're obviously made for other social media setups. Um, shorts are cool because like, like it's short form content. You don't need to designate 30 minutes of, like to watch some of our content. And yeah. to be honest with you, we're just learning. We don't know what we're doing. You probably have more of an idea about that sort of stuff than we do. So we're just having a crack having a bit of fun and yeah, it's not too yeah. serious, but sorry, it's clogging up your feed. Um, I'll endeavor to make it better content so it doesn't <laughs> clog it up, but um, yeah. But it, it's also something that is like, it's the new form of content. Like all of the different social media channels have got short form content as well as long form and YouTube is pushing shorts. So for YouTube, it's important for yeah. us to upload We're that. We're just having a crack at yeah. the end of the day. And some people on their YouTube just have the app and they just watch the shorts. So we do have subscribers who are purely just watching our shorts and then we obviously have people like you who are watching our long form content. Which we so, are thankful for. Yeah. We're just so. trying to like, give a bit of content to everyone. Do you feel pressure to create content that's engaging and different to what others are producing? Hell yeah, like I want our stuff to be as weird, wacky, crazy, but informative and fun as possible. Like there's no good just having like a hundred videos of the exact same thing on yeah. YouTube. So it's all about having that like unique identity and, and creating your own thing and having your own mm. spin off on a place. Like we'll go down and film the beach and someone else might film it in a totally different yeah. way. And, if well, you already like, watch their video, um, then it's going to be the same, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, 100%. We definitely feel the pressure, but let us know in the comments, do we make a good vid? Is it entertaining? Stuff <laughs> like that. It's all about your feedback at the end of the day. It's all about you guys. So, Is yeah. YouTube worth the time and effort? Um, yes and no. Like, it's taken us three years to get to the point where we're making a solid income from it. 
but that's like three years. Whereas in our teacher and electrician job, we could have had three years of I was on like 90k a year, and you probably would be on that now. So yeah. it's like if we you gave up a lot money, of money yeah. to put our time and effort into yeah. YouTube. Just quickly on that too, like a good way to think about YouTube and making money off it is that you've got to learn sort of and grow and get better, similar to what you would do as like an apprentice. Like I can relate to being an electrician apprentice. And uh, the first few years, you don't make bugger all. Uh, you don't have any skills. You're just making it up. You're just having a crack. And you're trying to learn at the end of the day. Uh, you've sort of got to dedicate that couple years, at least three, four years, the same sort of um, span as an apprenticeship on just learning and, and trying to get better at it, if that makes sense. Because you're just a nervous mess when you first start. Um, we were, especially. So that's a good way to think about it. Um, you start off on an apprentice wage and it slowly becomes a tradesman's wage. And then by the end of your apprenticeship, you're still learning. Like for us, we're still learning every day. And like I said, we don't know what we're doing. And uh, look, look at me right now. I'm bloody morphed on this t bloody screen here. Look at this. I can do stuff like this, you know. I'm, I'm just making it up as I go. So anyway... I just thought I'd throw that in. It's not fast money, but like we said, we 100% like recommend people having a crack because the worst thing that's going to happen is you're not going to like it and you stop doing it. Mm -hmm. And like I said previously, humans don't uh, fail, they quit. So if you spend long enough doing something like we have for three years doing something so averagely <laughs> for an extraordinary period of time, it becomes an extraordinary average thing, which is what we are now. Like our videos aren't great. But because we've been doing it for such a long time, it's just made it something. You know what I mean? Like that's pro that's that's where we're at. So if you're gonna start a YouTube, just do it for the right reasons. Don't start it to get rich quick. Start it because you want to have some fun. You want to have a crack, and you want to help as many people as you can. Because that is the best part about what we do is helping people. Thought I'd throw that in as well. How do you handle the public hassling you when you pull into camp like us? Well. It's very nice to meet like-minded people, and you guys definitely did not hassle us. It was yeah. those people we met in um, McKay, 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 ah, Mac uh, McKay you know, <laughs> again. <laughs> we we we're not. Um, we don't need the the pat on the back. We don't need that gratitude to do what we do. Um, it's certainly nice to put faces to yeah. numbers because we just see the screen and so many people have viewed it. So to get that feedback from real life humans saying we it's love nice. your videos is. Yeah makes you feel warm. Then there's also the other side when people can be a little bit like overstepping. Like we've had people come up and knock on our door when all of our windows are up and intrude in our personal space. So there's like you guys who just sat back and like, well, oh, hey guys, like once we were in the same area, but then there's yeah. like the other side of it where people will like just come into camp. And yeah. And the reason we think it's so bizarre is because we're just normal people. Yeah. Like we've been <laughs> saying this whole time, we're not special. We just got a camera and an internet access. That's all we are. And, um, but like Sarah said, there's people that overstep and like we've had people waiting for us at our camp in the middle of the bush, taking photos of our setup, sending them to us saying, we're waiting under your awning, mm. you know what I mean? And like, it's just, there's like a line that you cross and- You've got to like sort of treat the a person's caravan is their home. So it's like, you wouldn't go into someone's backyard and like sit on their back porch and wait for them. Like yeah. if you didn't, hadn't met them before. So yeah. I don't know, just like- But if you do see us cruising around and stuff, come say good day. We yeah. love chatting to you. It's like, if you see us out and about, um, definitely come say good day. We are so approachable and we will have a fat yarn with you and um, spin some tails. So yeah, anyway. How did you get over the fear of people judging you when you started a YouTube channel? Repetition, just <laughs> doing something, like I said, so averagely yeah. for an extraordinary amount of time makes it averagely extraordinary, so. I reckon once we left our home state, we actually felt a little bit better. Once, no one knew yeah. us, we were just like, oh yeah, g'day, g'day YouTubers, uh, they're, they're down the beach, mate. <laughs> we've heard of people blocking all of their family and friends on their social media channel. Don't do that, just, they're the, they're the people that won't judge you. If the people that love you won't judge you. The people I feel that like friends definitely judge you, but that's okay. Uh, well, I've probably been judged. <laughs> um, okay, for a couple starting their lap and want to work with brands, how do you grab the attention with such low followers? We are wanting to do UGC, but no one gives us the time. Right, next week we're going to cover that. All right, filming and editing. You do some great drone shots. What tips would you have for a newbie drone pilot? Have a coffee if you've got an addiction because your thumbs will be going like this otherwise. So I always have a coffee, then I fly the drone, and it's nice and smooth. That's about it. Are you guys doing going to do a complete caravan 12-volt setup? Oh, excuse me. Some mozzie in here. 
Are you guys going to do a complete caravan 12 volt setup tutorial video for newbies that is standalone from your other content A to Z or you need to know specific tutorials? Um, we've got one coming up on a car very shortly. Yeah. It's hard because like we're governed by where we are. If I've got a shed, a couple tools, you know, I can mock up a video, show you what's going on. But if we're out in the bush, it's hard to film a video on, on 12 volt. I've, tr I've done it in the past and it's like very difficult because like the wind's there and like you don't have an undercover space yeah. and you just spread out your tools and it's and just And then people like come into the camp and it's awkward. <laughs> yeah, I'm filming in front of everyone and yeah. How do you capture in both frames for socials, Instagram, YouTube and TikTok? Do you do it all twice? Sometimes we'll do it twice, sometimes we'll film with the camera and the phone or sometimes we'll just crop the high res video from the Sony for it. What are your tips for being able to vi edit your videos quicker? Re I don't, repetition. Don't, <laughs> don't ask me. I'm slow as hell. Trust me. Yeah, I've gotten quicker editing all of our short form content, and it's literally just been from practicing and. Yeah. Yeah. You get better at it. I would love to know about your content creation journey, learning the skills, and growing. Um. Lots of YouTube tutorials, like. Yeah. Research. We googled heaps. We learned heaps. Just be well aware for yeah. the fact that if you do it for two years or even a year, you're going to look back at the stuff you did <laughs> at the start and absolutely hate it. So don't necessarily try to make that your best ever stuff. Bang some stuff out, get some reps in, and then just change one or two things every time you do it. And if you're learning and improving one or two things every time, you're going to be Stop amazing at it. So, But just get very comfortable with the fact that at the start, you will look back on it and you will think, wow, this sucks or I'm very cringy here or whatever. Like you won't yeah. like watching it in a year's time best software for video editing for youtube we run <laughs> iMovie because again we're pretty stingy and we try to save money and that's free on all apple products and like final cuts 500 bucks and then you can get adobe suites with premiere pro and a lot of people use that but it's just a lot more expensive than free <laughs> so um that's why we run iMovie where do you get your music for your videos? We pay for like a subscription, which is monthly and it's all royalty free music. So yep. if you just type into Google royalty free music subscription, it'll come up with a list of all different programs. Yeah, you've got use. like art list and stuff. Products you couldn't live without when creating content, iPhone. iPhone, they're so good. You don't even need a camera these yeah. days. Just whip your phone out, do a bit of that, film it up, and then yeah. just straight on YouTube. We know so many people who but mainly on Instagram and TikTok, they just do all of their stuff on their phone. And when we started our first YouTube videos, we did it on our phone. And Whistler, Whistling Diesel, he still runs an iPhone for like a lot of his filming. He does run a good camera sometimes, but a lot of it is just iPhone straight up to YouTube, like very little editing and look what happens to them channels. They just blow up, so. Gentle. Bang. <laughs> We tried to get through every single one of those questions. That was literally every question answered. We didn't crop out any. That was literally it. And uh, that's the way we like to keep it. Because yeah. if you ask it, we answer it. So. And we hope that we did answer everyone's questions properly. Because I feel like sometimes we can like go on a bit of a tangent and not answer questions properly. Yeah. So, so hopefully, hopefully you learned something. If you did enjoy today's video, hit that subscribe button. Because next week we're going to be making a video and it's going to be tell all. Um, real and we'll probably go into more detail on filming and editing yeah, how to make money all that good stuff so yeah if you did enjoy today's video subscribe we've got some sick content coming out this year we cannot wait to bring you up to wa coast we cannot wait to do the fj build with you and uh yeah that was pretty sick if you do want merch we got some merch don't look out all this here's a bit of behind the scenes the camera just died so that's what we've been filming on that sony and uh this is what it's like looking towards the camera and talking at it you feel like you're going a bit insane so there's a bit of behind the scenes but if you did enjoy today's video next week we're going to be telling all about how to make money in this social media space there's something that not many people talk about so we cannot wait to show you that help as many people as possible hopefully you've had a laugh today with us it's been a long day but uh hopefully we answered your questions and did them justice if you did want merch we've got some fully sick merch so obviously cruising is living and uh we got hats as well corduroy hats this will make you the coolest person at camp for, for damn sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you did get anything out of today's video. And we'll see you next week. And we'll bring you along the WA Coast for 2024. Thanks for watching, legends. Make sure you click and watch this video right here.